Pat with the Right Channel Radio. I'm going to be going over some uh, common questions that we've been asked either you know, through our website or we've just found online about CB radio, CB equipment. Okay, question. Does SWR calibration need to be repeated in the future or is it only done once on a new CB radio? You, you don't tune the radio, of course, you tune the antenna and the antenna system to your vehicle. So once you tune your antenna to your vehicle and you get acceptable SWR, you really shouldn't need to retune it unless let's say you change antennas obviously, or let's say you're on, on the trail and the antenna takes a hard hit. Or if you notice something going on with your comms, like if you're not getting clear communication, getting a lot of static, something like that, then I would check your SWR. It's a good idea to, you know, to check it from time to time. Most radios also, if you have high SWR, they'll have a uh, high SWR warning. So you know SWR is out of whack. And that way um, you don't, you know, transmit with high SWR and risk uh, burning up your radio. And anytime you change an antenna, you will need to tune it. What if you don't have an SWR meter? Can you still tune your antenna? Well, depends on the radio you have obviously a lot of radios have built-in swr meters but if you have a radio that doesn't have a uh, that doesn't have an swr meter and you don't have an external meter can you tune your antenna not really <laughs> you need one to tune your antenna so you just be kind of guessing uh, at that point how do i do my antenna and if i cannot get to a big open range what's the reading i need to look for okay well we recommend folks, obviously, when you go to tune your CB antenna that you get into a nice open spot, free of power lines, obstructions, trees, things that can affect the standing wave on your radio system. If you live in a, a very metropolitan area, well, I, I recommend that you try to find, you know, like a soccer complex, softball complex, something like that, that has, you know, large parking lots is more wide open, you know, maybe even a mall, right? Those are mostly deserted these days. In the way out in the parking lot, away from power lines if you can, and then tune your antenna out there. You just don't want a wide open space. You don't want to be right next to a metal building, to under power lines, under big trees, or anything like that. But if you're in a decently open space, you'll be able to tune your antenna. So do that. Here's a question. I'm brand new to CB radios. The Midland 75822 appears to be the best choice for me to have in my Honda Pilot. What type of magnetic roof antenna do you recommend and how does connecting cable come with the antenna? Or and does a connecting cable come with the antenna? Uh, Midland 75822 is a very popular radio primarily for its flexibility. You can use it as a handheld unit and it also comes with that car kit so you can just plug it into DC power and attach an external antenna very easily. Folks are have a 75822, they're not looking for a massive magnet antenna. So the Wilson Little Will or the President of Virginia are both very popular choices to pair with that. For the most range, you would get something like the Wilson 1000 and a Stryker um, SRA10, something like that. Uh, those would be great antennas, higher quality, longer antenna you choose, the more range you'll, you'll get in that scenario. When mounting the magnetic Virginia antenna on my car roof, do I leave the rubber booty on the magnet or does a rubber need to be removed to make ground connection? Good question, we get this a lot. Um, most magnet antennas, well, basically all magnet antennas have a kind of a, a anti-scratch surface on the, on the base. The President Virginia kind of has, like you said, kind of a little bit of a rubber boot. The Wilson 1000s, Wilson Little Wills, they all have a coating on the bottom to prevent scratching your car. Obviously, if it was just metal to metal magnet, that would scratch the heck out of the paint on, on your car and you would not want that. So those all are engineered and made to stay on and you will get a nice ground connection from the antenna to your vehicle, even though you are leaving that on. Will the President DigiMic Deluxe six pin noise canceling mic work with my first generation President Bill, not the newer President Bill? Uh, of course, yeah. Uh, the Digi mic is a six pin noise canceling mic. It's gonna work with not only the president six pin radios, but unit and six pin radios as well. So that is, uh, that will work for a variety of six pin radios, not only president brand. I'm getting a bunch of electrical noise through my CB. What's the best way 
to deal with this. Uh, this is a scenario we've dealt with a lot. So first thing I recommend in dealing with electrical noise, can make sure that you have your radio powered to a clean power source. I recommend going to the fuse box or direct to the battery. If you're going, let's say, to a cigarette lighter plug into a DC port, a lot of times that can create you know, some electrical noise or you're picking up noise through those uh, that electrical source. Also, when you are powering the radio, I recommend that you take the black wire, the negative wire, I ground it independently somewhere on the vehicle where it's not sharing a ground with other wires so you can't get that noise. If you're still dealing with noise issues, I recommend um, you can get like little snap-on like uh, little ferrites. We sell some of these at Right Channel, but you can snap those on to uh, sources of potential noise, namely LED light bars, things like that are known for creating a lot of electrical noise. Can the Cobra 29 be hardwired instead of using the plug? Um, not quite sure what he means by that because Cobra 29 does come with bare wires to be hardwired into the vehicle. I think he maybe is, or this person's uh, wondering if you don't have to use a DC power plug. Obviously you do not. Um, the most popular ways of powering CB radio are going to the fuse panel with a fuse tap, going direct to the battery, or using a cigarette lighter plug. The, the two first, first options I mentioned, going uh, to a fuse panel or to the battery, is going to be a cleaner power source, you'll get less electrical noise through those. However, it might not be as handy or quick as an, of an installation, but yes, you can absolutely hardwire your Cobra 29. Uh, also, the radio comes with a fused power cord, so you are safe there. What's the best antenna to use with the President George AM, FM, and SSB radio? Uh, the President George is a high performance radio, um, antenna logic still applies. You want, you know, depending on where you're going to mount the antenna on your vehicle, you got to choose the right antenna, top loaded, you know, base loaded, center loaded. Uh, typically with the President George, if you're going with a high end radio like that, you're going to go with the high end antenna, like let's say the Stryker SRA magnet um, antenna is a really high performing magnet antenna. Uh, you could go with uh, some of the Driver Extreme products if you're looking for a fiberglass antenna, you know, even the Firestick FS. Two is a great antenna for you know top loaded antenna. Striker uh, 1020 if you're going to the center load antenna, that's a good one. Same with the Wilson 5000 trucker. If you're using it for home base, go with an Antron 99. Hard to beat that antenna with the ground plane kit even. That's what I choose with the President George. And that is all the questions we have right now.